Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So, guys, before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick confirmation if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Perfect. Thank you for confirmation, everyone. So, my name is Neeraj Kheria, and I have been working in this IT industry for more than 13 years now. So let me share our Edureka Masterclass community with you all. So this community of Masterclasses was started back in 2019. And since then, we have been closing into almost 31,000 members so far. And in these Masterclasses, we can have multiple webinars and live events on different topics, including blockchain, IoT, artificial intelligence, big data, on multiple front-end and back-end development technologies. And the best part about these webinars are they are absolutely free, of course. So there are no charges involved here. And in these webinars, we conduct multiple live events and the webinars as well on a monthly basis. So to be a part of this group and to get notified for the for each and every event being conducted here, so you can click on join this group and then you will be notified with the entire schedule that we have planned for the month. So let's get started. So we have gathered for a discussion on SQL for data science, where we are going to discuss on what exactly data science is and why SQL is needed for data science. And then we are going to discuss on what exactly SQL is. And then we are going to discuss on the basics of SQL and seeing a small hands-on if the time allows, then we are going to see a small hands-on on top of it as well. So let's get started. So now we know that since the time, data science has been ranked at number one for being the most promising job of the era. We all are trying to join the race of learning data science. And that exactly is what, why we have landed on the introduction of different technologies into the data science field. So we know that again, we are generating more than 2.5 quintillion bytes of data each day. Now this space of data generation is a reason behind the popularity of high end technologies such as data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on. So driving useful insights from data is what is termed as data science. And data science involves extracting, processing, and analyzing tons of data. And at present, what we need are tools that can be used to store and manage this vast amount of data. And that is what, and that is where the SQL comes into play. So SQL, as we know, can be used to store, access, and extract massive amounts of data in order to carry out the whole data science process more smoothly. All right. And what exactly is SQL? So now we know that first of all, SQL stands for the structured query language. And we know that the entire process of extracting, processing, and analyzing tons of data, again, it is a part of data science. And at present, we need tools that can be used for storing this vast amount of data. And SQL, as we know, is going to be used for storing, accessing, and extracting massive amounts of data in order to carry out the whole process more smoothly. And that exactly is what SQL is. That's, that is why SQL is used here to handle that structured data set. So we don't use SQL for managing unstructured and, and the semi-structured data set. We use it for managing structured data set, which makes up around 20% of the data currently being generated. So how massive the source size that depends upon the engine that we have used that we are going to use chill out so the amount of the storage capacity that we have paid for that will decide okay how much of data we can store in one single in one single instance and if you want if you have a large requirement then we can go for creating a large cluster of multiple instances and use the capacity to store a humongous amount of data set all right so if we talk about SQL and what exactly SQL is, so SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it is basically a queuing language aimed to manage relational databases. So, but again, what exactly we mean by relational database? So now, if by, first of all, by using SQL, we can manage, we can conduct all the CRUD operations as in create, read, update, and delete as a part of the language. And if you talk about the concept of relational database, so a relational database is basically a group of well-defined tables from which data can be accessed, edited, updated, and so on. So without having to alter the database tables. Now SQL is a standard API for relational databases. 
And coming back to SQL, now SQL programming can be used to perform multiple actions on data, such as curing, inserting, updating, deleting database records. So the examples are MySQL, Database, Oracle, MyDB, Postgre, Microsoft SQL Server. So they were all are examples for SQL-based database. All right. And there are multiple database engines available, like we have MySQL, as we discussed. So MySQL is the most popular RDS system, as in the relation database system, which is basically an open source database system. That means there is no licensing involved here. It supports multiple programming interfaces. It supports large databases where we can store terabytes of data in a single database. And we can customize the backup process. We can customize the deprecation process, the, the automatic backup process as well, as and when required. All right. Now, in terms of the MySQL data types, there are multiple data types available that we can work with. So, first of all, we have numeric. So, numeric data type includes integer, small integer, float, real, double, precision, decimal. And then we have the Boolean values, which includes true, false, or known data set. Then we have character strings, which involves character, varchar, and club. And then we have date and time, which includes date and time properties. Then we have bit string, which includes, which includes a bit and the bit varying strings. And then we have timestamp and interval. So these are different data types available under MySQL. So first of all, if you talk about the basics of MySQL, then it provides a, it provides a set of simple commands to modify data tables. So first of all, we have create database. So this is used for creating a new database with any name we want. So if you want to work with any database, then we can go ahead and run this statement. So, but again, for example, if we have already have the access to any database engine, so we can go ahead and run this command. And this is going to create a database by the given name. And we can give any name depending upon the requirement as for the requirement. And then once we have database created, then we can create multiple tables in that database. For example, if we are talking about a database for e-commerce section. So for e-commerce, we can have different databases. We can have different tables defined within a single database. We can have a different table for inventories, a different table for customers, a different table for orders, a different table for returns, and so on. We can have completely different set of tables defined. And then we can choose to define the entire schema set. Okay, how exactly the schema is going to be for that particular table? and then we can resume working on it. So we have the complete liberty of choosing the platform, which we, we, or we can say how exactly we want to start creating the table. Then we have create table. So when we have the database defined, we can define create table, the name of the table, along with all the variables. For example, we are creating a table for inventories. Then the first variable name would be, suppose product name and the data type, whether it is going to be a varchar or integer, then second one can be price, and then we can define type of that price. It can be a double value, it can be a float value. So we have to define these types. All right. Generate the budget of the organization. Sometimes the spreadsheet freezes, sometimes there's an old version of the Excel cause compatibility issues. Can SQL be used to make a better workflow, or is SQL not the best technology for the solution? All right. So let's see if we can get connected to any of our database endpoint that we can use for our practice just a moment so we have this database engine that we can get connected to so as a part of the practice here we can use any of the platform that we are comfortable with so as a part of the hands-on we are going to make use of a platform called as dbver through which we can get connected to any database engine that we may have structured database client called as dbver so there are endless number of clients so we can use any client that we are comfortable with. So here we can use any of the clients to get started. So in case we already have defined one database engine, then we can use this client, which allows us to get connected to multiple engines at any point of time. So it's a community tool. So we don't have, we, so, so we don't have to worry about getting connected to a single engine. Once we have linked it, so we can simply go ahead and create a new, a new connection. So we can define the host name of the engine that we have up and running. 
And here we can find a username and password that we have used for this connection. So if the connection is successful, we would be able to see the entire list of the sample database. So we'll be having the connection established and once it has been established, we would be able to work on this instance and perform all the SQL statements just because this one is running on MySQL. And if the credentials are correct, we would be able to get the access as soon as possible. That's how it is going to be. So as you can see, now the connection has been established. So now if you want, we can use the entire GUI platform or we can go ahead and start creating any platform or we can start using the script editor as well. So let's say if you, if you don't want to use this graphical user interface, you want to use the script, then here we can have a SQL editor and then we can choose the engine on which you want to run the scripts. And as you can see now, the entire script editor is with us. So we can go ahead and execute any script we want. So let's say here we want to start creating our database. So here we can use a simple syntax as create database. So for example, here we can type in as create database. So here we can define create database and then we can define the name of the database. For example, we want to create a database for e-commerce. Then we can define the name as e-commerce and then we want to start using the table. So here we can define another statement as use e-commerce. So now a new database is going to be created by the name of e-commerce and that is what we are even going to use here as well that's how it is going to work all right then apart from create table we have now then we can once we have this one executed then we can go ahead and create tables within this database as well once database has been created in the current instance that we defined here so as you can see here once we execute this we can see the query was create database and then that query has been successfully created so if you refresh this, a new database has been defined by the name of e-commerce. And now we want to start using e-commerce and we can define the name as use e-commerce. And now we now within this table, within this database, now we want to start creating table. So we can define this as syntax as create table, then the name of the table. For example, we can go back here. We can use create table and then we can define table name for example we want to define a table name as inventories so here we can define inventories as a table name and then we can define what kind of columns you want to have for example let's say first of all we want to have product name as defined as one of the columns so we can keep on defining columns and their data types so first of all it has to be placed under the bracket so here we have bracket and then within this we have the first thing as product name and this is going to be supposed as varchar and how many characters we can define suppose we want to have 100 characters we can define name here again a comma next we want to show then next we want to have a price so we can define price again this is going to be what price is going to be a simple double value so here we can define double and then we can keep define what kind of double value we want to have next we want to define the suppose something for rating so here we can define rating and rating is going to be suppose as integer or integer or suppose double value we can define double for D for rating as well. And then we can define another column. So here we, um, another column we can define, let's say here we have how many orders have been received. So we can define orders and then we can define this one is going to be what? This one is going to be an integer value. And then we can define the range of the value that we want to have as a part of integer. So we can define whatever we want to define and we can simply define the type of data that we are going to, to allow in these different values. And once we are done, we can simply close the send, close the statement by using a semicolon. And this is going to mark this, table, this entire statement as completed. So this is currently going to be executed in this particular database that we have defined. In case we have multiple database, then we have to define, okay, under which database this statement is going to be executed. And once we define, okay, suppose here we want to use e-commerce, then we can define, okay, within e-commerce, we have to, to define, we have to define the table within the e-commerce, and that's how it is going to be created. So here we have to keep on defining the statements, and again, accordingly, this is going to be defined and created in the given database that we have defined. That's how it is going to work. All right, so next we have the insert into statement. So insert into is basically used for inserting all the values. 
So let's say if we already have a column defined, then we can start inserting values. Now, next we have select aspect from table. Suppose if you want to select all the tables within a given database, then we can define it as and when required. So again, all the tables within that is going to be, they all are going to be selected. All right. Next we have update. So update is basically used to update any given statement. So we have to, so for example, if you're looking to update a given table, then we can define the table name and then we can define what kind of variables you want to execute in that particular table. So that is what we can define here. Then we have delete. So in case we are looking to delete any of the statements here, so we can define delete from table where the current condition. So this is going to delete all the data sets in case we want to define a condition. Let's say we want to, to delete those rows for which the order value is zero. So then that is going to simply delete the entire table accordingly. That's how it is going to work. And then if you want to delete the table itself, then for deleting the table, that means we have to drop the table. In case, let's say we want, we have multiple tables and now we want to delete a complete table that instead of using delete, we have to use drop. Drop means we are going to permanently delete a table. That's how it is going to work. Thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.